Let's look at Descartes' first reason for doubting uh, whatever he can doubt. That is, his senses sometimes deceive him. And the question is, what is it about his senses that sometimes deceive him? And basically, he says, you know, sometimes we think we see things, you know, especially in the distance, uh, that we later discover we were incorrect about. Off in the distance, we see somebody that we think is, this is my uh, my example, not Descartes, somebody who's extremely attractive, you know, and then after a while, as they get closer and closer, the uh, there used to be a commercial on TV that uh, for some, I think it was um, either hairspray or hair coloring, the closer she gets, the better she looks. Well, this is exactly the opposite. The closer the person gets, the worse they look. So you say, gee, you misperceive things. You saw something in the distance, and you're wrong. So Descartes notes that this happens you know, with some frequency, that you your senses seem to tell you something, and you're wrong about them. And he says that gives you reason for doubting everything from the senses, the idea being... I believe, and this is his phrase, that you can't trust something that has deceived you in the past. Think about it. If somebody's conned you out of money, uh, you're not going to give him, a, him or her money again because they've already conned you about it. Now the question is, what kind of things are now doubtful as a result of thinking about the deceptive senses argument that we have? And remember, we made the distinction between things that you could know a priori, independent of experience, things that were just can be known just by thinking about them, and the distinction between that and things which you need experience to know, like that there are desks, chairs, tables, and those kinds of things. Uh, examples of uh, things that you know a priori, mathematics, uh, you know, one plus one is two, those kinds of things. Now, the descent, the deceptive senses argument is really only about things that you know a posteriori, or that are knowable a posteriori, sometimes things that are contingently true. Now, Descartes has uh, a kind of powerful argument for deceiving, But in the objections and replies, we see that maybe it's his arch rival. And it, when you when you read the exchanges, you can see they aren't too uh, excited about each other. They don't seem to like each other. Gassendi, who at that time is a famous philosopher, obviously today he's not quite uh, does not have the same stature in philosophy that Descartes has. Uh, but in in that time, Descartes was a nothing, and Gassendi was one of the leading philosophers of the time. And he objected to this as being a reason because he said, you know, it's only a problem that is deceptive. This fact that the deceptive senses is, is, uh, is a reason to doubt things, it's only a problem if it happens all the time. Because the idea is, according to Gassendi, is if it happened all the time, we could never detect that it happened. He says, but look, we know that our senses sometimes deceive us, so we can pick out cases where they deceive us and where they, where they don't. And so he objects to this reason for Descartes, but Descartes isn't left, you know, uh, that's not a knockout punch for him. He's still standing up ready to fire back, and he does. His reply to Gassendi is, it doesn't matter whether we suspect the falsity or not. Either way, there are reasons for doubt, and he is looking to find things that he's certain in the sense that they're immune from doubt.